you can't start your piece of machinery and you have to keep choking and it'll run for a second or two, then it'll die and you have to choke it again and run it. That's very simple. All you need to do is to open up your low speed screw, which is here on this uh, carburetor or the barrel style, it's at the top. Open that about a quarter to a half a turn, try again. If it still doesn't work, open it another quarter to a half a turn, try again, and it will start. So if it doesn't start, you want to give yourself a bit more fuel on the low speed side of the car. Don't touch the high speed screws at all. Leave those alone for now. So you've got your engine started and you're pulling that trigger, but there's that bog. Boop. And every time you go and pull it, it almost wants to die and it kind of stutters and, and eventually you might get to wide open throttle, but there is that bog or you might have to, um, what you call flatter the trigger slightly and pull it a couple of times and eventually you'll get enough fuel. That is a lean symptom on idle. So that's the low speed screw again. Open up your low speed at quarter to a half turn. Don't touch the high. It's not a high speed screw symptom. Same on here, if you're getting that bog when you're pulling that trigger, before it gets to wide open throttle, it's your low speed screw. On this case, it's up the top. Open it a quarter, half a turn, until that bog disappears. What happens if you pull that trigger and it splutters and eventually it'll get to wide open throttle? That is a rich symptom on L. Do not touch the high speed screws. It's literally just the low speed screws. Your engine is saying, I'm getting too much fuel, I can't combust it, please give me less. So then you close the LL speed screw, you turn it to the right. And in this case, you close it and you turn this one to the right. That will give you slightly less fuel and you'll start to feel that when you pull that trigger, that burble will disappear and it will start to run and get to wide open throttle much cleaner, much nicer. So what happens when you pull that trigger, you get up to, um, nearly full throttle and then the engine is lacking power it doesn't want to run very well and uh, it may wish to even die it's a high speed fuel supply issue it's lacking if the engine wants to die uh, when you're pulling that trigger and you've got it pinned and it's not really getting to full throttle and it's running poorly then just open the high speed screw until you start to hear that engine four stroke very simple on this style carburetor, this is your high speed screw, pin that trigger, open that until you start to hear it four stroke and you're absolutely fine. If you're at wide open throttle, you've pulled that trigger and you just hear that the engine is running very rough, uh, it's running much slower than you think it should, it's producing a lot of smoke, that's telling you that you're getting too much fuel at wide open throttle and you want to close this. Again, you adjust the high speed screw ideally under load so that when you're doing whatever cutting you're doing that you haven't got the engine four stroking. As soon as you take it off the load with the trigger still pinned, it should four stroke. That's how you tune that one. What happens if your engine will start, but it doesn't matter what adjustment you do to the idle speed screw, this one and this one, the engine will just rev too high. More often than not, that's not a symptom or an issue with the carburetor, it's more likely an air leak. The engine is getting air from somewhere else and it doesn't matter how much you adjust this screw, uh, it's not going to affect it. If that's the case, you can't bring your idle speed down to the point where it's at its normal typical idle speed, you need to start finding an air leak. And uh, that's another video, there's too many different possibilities that, that could be, but that's just another thing you might find. That's generally two things. One, the needle inside the carburetor is not seating properly, most likely from dirt or debris that's inside there. Or two, your low speed screw is set too rich and it's giving you too much fuel. You want to close it. You may find when you're tuning engines that they all seem to be okay, but when you come off wide open throttle and you bring them back to idle, they can actually drop and stall when they've come back down. That is a symptom of too much fuel on the high speed side, not the low side, even though they work together, not the low side, it's a high speed fuel symptom. If it idles fine, everything's great, but when you come back off wide open throttle, the RPM drops a lot and it wants to die, you must lean out your high speed screw. 
And what happens if you uh, start your engine and uh, you find that you can get it started, but slowly it, the RPMs kind of come down while it's just sitting there idling and eventually it stalls. That can be two symptoms. I found most commonly it's too rich on the low side and it's what we call loading up. And I would then suggest just leaning out the low slightly. And if you find that actually it's made it worse, that's okay. Then you know that it's not actually loading up. It's just not getting enough fuel. But more often than not, that slow kind of RPM decrease over sort of 15, 30 seconds, that's more often than not too much fuel on the low side. So give yourself a bit less fuel, turn that in a quarter of a turn, eighth of a turn, and you should see that improve. Now, when you turn your engine on the side, you might find that the engine wants to dip in RPM. Lots of people will say, oh, that's your crank seal's gone. That's actually not a, a, a valid test for crank seals. It's, it, it, in fact, it shows very little, if anything. If you want to test crank seals, the best way is a pressure and vacuum test. In fact, a vacuum test for crank seals. Um, what that's more likely to be is when an engine's idling, a two-stroke especially is idling, they're very ineffective at... Um, uh, transferring the fuel from the carburetor to the top of the cylinder to where the piston needs to combust it. There's often areas within the engine and the carb and the manifold where fuel likes to what we call pool. And that's basically as it sounds, you'll get little puddles of fuel and there are set areas where this will happen. Most commonly intake manifold or crankcase. When you let an engine idle and you pick it up, you disturb the fuel supply in those two main areas and the engine will want to change in RPM. That's very normal and it's not a sign or a, a lean symptom at all. Ignore that, forget it. Turning the saw on or the strimmer or whatever on the side when it's idling, you're more than likely releasing fuel, you're releasing that puddle of fuel. Again, the same thing applies. If you pick the engine up and you hear the engine tune change or the, the engine RPM change, that doesn't necessarily mean there is an issue. However, if you pick it up and it wants to stall or you turn it on its side and it wants to stall, then that's just saying that you're actually giving it too much fuel on the low speed screw. The fuel is pooling and it's not being combusted effectively. So you can lean out the low speed screw slightly. That will give you a little bit less fuel at idle, but it will avoid that pooling and you shouldn't have any issues. Which carburetor needle do you tune first, the low speed or the high speed? That is dependent on whether your carburetor is what we call a dependent carburetor or an independent carburetor. Before I go into what they are and how to tune each one and which screws we go through first, this is how you tell whether you have a dependent or an independent carb. Let your engine idle. When it's idling, shut the high speed screw and if once that screw's fully shut, the engine changes RPM or it dies, you have a dependent carburetor. If you shut the high speed screw and it doesn't affect the engine RPM at idle, you have an independent carburetor. If you have a dependent carburetor, you always tune the high speed screw first and then the low speed screw. And if you have an independent carburetor, you tune the low speed screw first and then you tune the high speed screw. So why is this? Why is that the case? Well, a dependent carburetor is one where all the fuel flows through the high speed drilling. So it goes through a single drilling in the metering chamber floor. It then passes the high speed screw and then it reaches the low speed screw. So any adjustment of this high speed screw will affect the low speed setting. That doesn't mean that you use the high speed screw to tune the low speed setting. It just means that it will affect it. It's going to limit it because, of course, all that fuel has to pass the high speed screw first. Any adjustment here will affect the adjustment here. On an independent carburetor, you tune the low speed screw first because the fuel supply at idle. Can you see one? You'll probably be, you might be able to see two. One, two. There's one more back there. They are your, there's one which is an idle drilling and the two behind it are known as progressive idle drillings. As you open the butterfly in this case, you're going to give it more fuel and it's going to start to pick up 
from the first drilling, the second drilling, the third drilling, and then eventually it will pick up fuel from your main nozzle. But just because it's picking up fuel from your main nozzle at wide open throttle, it doesn't mean that it stops supplying fuel through these idle drillings. Where are they? There they are. They'll still supply fuel. So that means that when you're tuning your saw at idle and you're letting it know how much fuel you're going to give it, it's still going to be supplying that fuel at wide open throttle. So if you give it a bit less or a bit more, it's actually going to affect, even though it's not how you tune the high side, it will still affect the amount of fuel it will get. So you always tune the screw that will affect the other one first. This is that simple. The high speed screw will affect the low speed, so we tune it first in a dependent carby. The low speed will affect the high speed screw in an independent carby, and we tune the low speed screw first. There we go, guys. I hope it helps you out on your tuning journey, and I hope it helps explain as to why your engine is showing certain symptoms and how to overcome those as well. Now, if you want an actual tuning video, how to tune a carburetor, then click, hopefully this works, is it the left side? Something like that. Click that link, that's going to take you to a video that I've done that shows you how to tune a carb. And uh, you can put those two videos together so you can try and tune your engine. And if you find that it's giving you certain symptoms, you can jump back to this video and then you can correct those symptoms accordingly. All right, I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.